After a refreshing shower and getting to put on his new uniform, all that really changed about it was that it was new. It felt great to wear it. And the badges and insignia showcasing his new rank, two realizations struck him. The first was that, besides Commander Redford, he had no idea who else he had saved from that dreadful black ship. The sincere words of the prince were clear enough, though. He had saved a member of the royal family, but who? The prince had four younger brothers and three younger sisters, if he remembered correctly. Had he saved one of them? Two? All? And who's to say that he had saved any of his siblings? Duke Draymore wasn't the only duke or duchess after all, and the prince had many cousins and other family members. He really didn't care, but he did owe his new position in life to said royal blue blood, so the least he could do was say thank you. The second realization, though, was much more impactful and important. Namely speaking, he had no idea how to be a lieutenant. His officer training was limited, obviously enough, and while he knew the chain of command and more or less what it entailed, he didn't know anything about commanding anything that wasn't his ship's outdated AI. I don't even know who am I supposed to report to or when, he muttered softly. Redford's parting words rang in his mind and fear gripped his heart. Just what was he getting himself into, willing or not? By choice or by chance, at that moment he longed for the dullness, repetitiveness, and security his old post offered. Now I'm going to fight and likely die for another noble with bluer blood than the insufferable Thomas Caston, he said to himself, but almost immediately comforted himself with the knowledge that, unlike his previous commander, the prince was a leader at heart, and his presence inspired confidence. A sudden voice sparked in his cabin, and the monotone tone of an A.I. called out. Lieutenant Wyatt Staples, report to the bridge, it said, and the connection died. Guess I better go perform my new duties, he said, and stood up from his bed. Fortunately, the trip to the bridge proved simple enough, and only two crew members had spotted him and, much to his surprise, saluted him. Or rather, his rank. It felt odd regardless. When he arrived at the bridge, it was buzzing with activity as staff and crew members moved about performing their jobs. He then spotted Commander Redford and several other men and women of high rank near the prince. Following protocol, he saluted and announced his presence. Lieutenant Wyatt Staples reporting, my liege. Several eyes turned to him, and instantly he felt like a piece of meat been grated by hungry customers. Disdain. Surprise, contempt, and flickering gratitude flashed before the cybernetic and gene-altered eyes of the officers present as they inspected him. Yeah, yeah, I'm a commoner. I'm not an animal you can gawk at, you damn blue bloods, he thought with equal disdain toward them. But unlike the nobles, he knew better than to show it. So it is true, a commoner has been granted a rank far above his station. A red-haired man with a burn scar on his left cheek broke the tension. My prince, are you certain of your decision? The implications could be bothersome to less open-minded individuals. Or, in other words, I should be kicked out, Wyatt thought, mentally glaring at the red-headed noble. Are you implying that I should not show my gratitude to the man who saved my beloved sister? The prince said in an even tone. The red-haired man laughed, much to Wyatt's surprise. Of course not, your majesty. But now that a commoner has been granted a rank that only those of noble blood should achieve, many others may seek the same elevation for doing piss-poor actions in the near future. Commander William Hempstroke, a blue-haired with equally stunning blue eyes, stepped in, humor in her voice. Is the rescue of a royal princess not enough merit to overlook this one incident? After all, many houses have their origins in the valiant actions of a commoner performing beyond their duty. And even if the prince had not rewarded this young man, I would have made sure to grant him a place within my house for saving the life of my little sister. Suddenly, her eyes narrowed, and much like a hawk, she eyed the rest of her fellow officers. Or does anyone object? An older man with gray hair and wearing an almost entirely white uniform with red trims and more medals than Wyatt had ever seen anyone wear before spoke up next. Enough prattle, everyone. We have more important matters to attend to. My liege, we are ready to depart at your command. The prince nodded once. Then let us go. We cannot stay in this system much longer. Admiral Damien, proceed at your discretion. My liege, the admiral replied. Commanders, report to your ships and stations. 
You have your orders. Dismissed. At once, every commander present saluted and left, with the exception of Redford. The admiral, for his part, moved to a chair at the far end of the bridge, sat on it, and linked with its systems directly. The only indication that they started to move was a low rumble that was felt rather than heard, and Wyatt wondered where they were headed next. Now left with relative privacy, the prince turned his attention back to him and gestured him to step closer, and so he did. Lieutenant Wyatt, there is someone who wishes to meet you, her savior, the prince said, and then turned to the right. With another motion of his hand, two figures stepped from concealed shadows. Wyatt's eyes grew wide as the flickering effect around the duo died out alongside the stealth field around them. The first figure was a beautiful blonde woman with purple eyes as striking as that of the prince. She was wearing a green dress with golden and white trims. Behind her stood a taller woman with blue hair and blue eyes that had a striking similarity to the woman who had stood up for him moments before. She was also quite beautiful, but her expression was stoic. Unlike the princess, she wore a red armored suit with the crest of her house on her chest. Lieutenant Wyatt Staples, let me introduce you to the VIP that you saved yesterday. My sister, the second princess, Clara Astor. Behind her stands her bodyguard and a close friend of mine, Cynthia Winfield of House Winfield. You've already met her older sister, Commander Juliana Winfield, the prince introduced. It was subtle and he barely noticed it, but Wyatt could notice the pride in the prince's voice alongside his relief when he introduced the two women. Princess Clara was the picture of regal royalty, feminine grace, and superb intelligence behind her fiery gaze. A gaze, he noticed, that matched her brother's. When she spoke, her voice of sing-song clarity carried the intensity of her fiery spirit without losing her elegance. Lieutenant Staples, I was told that it was through your actions that my life and that of my friend and subjects were saved. I requested my brother to see and speak to you in person so I may see and judge the man I owe my life to, she said, offering a kind smile. Wyatt felt his cheeks blushing, his social skills were poor at best, and being under the direct attention of such a beautiful woman was something he was not used to. Still, he managed to stand firm and give her a cordial salute. Your Majesty, I am honored to receive your recognition. To know that your life and that of those accompanying you are safe and sound is reward enough, he replied carefully and respectfully. Clara let out a giggle. Please, Lieutenant Staples, you need not be so nervous in my presence. Your gallantry is already enough for me to accept you for the valiant man that you are. Commoner or not, you are my savior. I am pleased that my brother dearest had rewarded you accordingly, even if I myself would give more. But alas, I cannot. Therefore, I can only offer my gratitude and a request to speak my name without those bothersome honorifics. Call me Clara. All my friends do so. Wyatt couldn't help but smile widely and sincerely at that. They were rare, but nobles that were actually worth their salt and weren't up their own asses existed, and he was glad that the princess was one of them. He felt his nervousness ease up and his posture relaxed. In that case, Clara, please call me Wyatt. Pleased to meet you, he said, offering his hand. A second later, he retracted it. Oh, right, sorry. To his surprise, the prince's laughter caught his attention. You're quite blunt, aren't you, Lieutenant Wyatt? Wyatt pointed a finger at himself. Commoner upbringing, my liege. The prince let out a single humorous chuckle before clearing his throat. As enjoyable as this is, I'm afraid we have other matters to attend to. Lieutenant Wyatt, I summoned you not only to meet my sister, but because I need your input. A second later, a holographic display appeared from the large tactical table at the center of the bridge. Wyatt took a couple of steps forward when he saw the visual representation of the entire principality and how the map was divided into several colors, with red, green, golden, and blue being the most prominent colors and countless sigils and emblems scattered across the systems that made up his home. The sheer enormity of the principality was awe-striking and terrifying at the same time. Duke Draymore's coup was an act of treachery unparalleled the prince began, his stoic, firm, fiery tone returned. I don't know for how long he's been planning it, but we've suspected treachery for at least two standard years. Nothing concrete was found until he made his opening move. The royal guard was compromised. The royal palace was besieged. 
and within scant hours, he named himself Regent. Thankfully, I was able to escape as well as other members of the Council of Nobles and some of my siblings. Regretfully, however, Duke Draymore was able to capture our two remaining sisters, Megan and Ruby, and two of our brothers, Leon and Caldro, and is keeping them hostage and as bargaining chips. My two remaining brothers, Alexander and Giovanni, were also able to escape, and alongside Clara, they served as distractions to allow my safe passage out of the system and find refuge among friends and loyal subjects. As it stands, Duke Draymore is gaining power slowly but surely the prince explained, pointing at the red area on the map. In red are the houses that have sided with my uncle so far and represent their territory. In golden are loyalist houses that have pledged themselves to me and the royal family. In blue are those undecided. And in green are those that have declared themselves as neutral, the prince said. And suddenly the map zoomed in. Wyatt soon recognized the map was projecting the small cluster of systems and worlds that made up the backwater he served under better known simply as the lingering systems. Technically speaking, the seven star systems and the small collection of worlds in them that made up the lingering systems were under the control of House Kasten. But in reality, they were almost outpost systems with little to offer except for whatever scant resources and manufacturing goods that could be gained there. In fact, the greatest produce made was the very reason he was a garbage hauler, compost. The richer and fertile surrounding territories needed compost for agricultural purposes and were the sole reason why the lingering systems were populated at all and why they were blessed with the leadership of a Kasten noble. However, everyone knew that such a position was either a punishment or a means to gain safe experience for any incompetent, petulant, self-righteous blue blood. Hell, they were such a backwater and so poor that pirates were a rarity, an ideal place to elude pursuers. Though it seems Duke Draymore thought of that possibility as well, hence why that strange black ship attacked the royal yacht. We will be traveling to the Keone system next. Our planned route takes us near Faldo, the only inhabited world in the system. According to our intelligence, pirate presence is minimal, and there is no direct Kasten presence there since Faldo is home to a mere ten million populace. I understand the gravity of the situation, my prince. But how, how am I to aid you? What further input can I provide? Wyatt asked cautiously. There is a problem that my commanders are not able to settle, the prince replied, and the map zoomed further in to showcase the Keone system and three systems that led directly to Kasten territory. Since the coup, we cannot trust the information we had before, and we cannot trust just anyone with information. However, fortunately for us, a loyal son of the principality is with us and can provide us with a viewpoint that only a commoner can have. I ask you, Lieutenant Wyatt, what path do you think is the most viable for us to take and quickly move onto House Finnegan territory? Wyatt didn't even ponder the question and pointed to the system on the far left called Gintrax. Going through Gintrax is the only solution, my liege. Gintrax, but there's a strong Kasten military presence alongside several monitoring stations, Commander Redford interjected. Wyatt shrugged. Only officially, but they are always understaffed. The ships stationed there are little more than outdated, cheap gunships and corvettes at best. And they take forever to answer to any emergency. Besides that, there's Woodshaft. Woodshaft? Clara asked, tilting her head in confusion. It's a smuggler den. Every commoner pilot and serviceman in the lingering systems knows about it and uses it. I've been there only twice, but it offers a path away from cased and sensors. And if you pay the toll, you can leave the system undetected, Wyatt explained and internally chuckled. Cased and blue bloods don't care where the money comes from, only that it reaches their grabby, greedy paws, he thought with mirth. Smuggling is illegal, the surprisingly melodic voice of the blue haired woman, Cynthia Winfield, declared. Maybe, Wyatt replied softly, but it happens. Woodshaft doesn't deal in slavery or narcotics, though. They're smugglers, not pirates, he clarified. After we arrive at Faldo, I'll send out a scout ship ahead to observe Gintrax's activity. If the information correlates, we shall advance as you suggested, Lieutenant Wyatt. Time is a luxury we can't afford much as we stand now, the prince said, crossing his arms. For now, you shall follow Commander Redford's orders and be under his charge. Dismissed. I guess this is really happening, 
Wyatt thought as he stared intently at the vanishing map. 